Um, I've, already, I've already welcomed everybody. I wanted to recognize a couple of our um, legislature field reps or county officials. Uh, I see two of them, the judge who prayed for us and then Mayor Paul Sandifer. Is there some more? Oh, Suzanne Miles. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Uh, anybody else that I overlooked? I'm sorry. All right. Do, does anybody, uh, does any members have any announcements that they'd like to bring forward to the meeting? Charlotte Wicker's not here, so no. <laughs> she, she, she's always it. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to bring up. Um, the better looking part of the pair of between me and Cece. Um, she's going to introduce the program and go forward. So, Cece Rose. Well, I think you really There we go. Good afternoon. Um, you know, this is our last meeting for a couple of months. We get to take our summer, summer break. So um, I'll miss seeing y'all smiling faces every month. Uh, today we have the um, unique opportunity to have three different people who are going to participate in our program. And um, I always love that because I think that means there's a lot of people who are invested in Ohio County and who want to be part of the good things that are happening in this community. Um, with that, um, I'm going to ask each of our um, sponsors today, knowing that we're doing um, three different sponsors to keep it concise but tell us the information that you need we're here to we're here for you and we want to hear what you have to say so we're going to start first with United Way and United Way is dear to my own heart um, I have participated as an employee who gives to the United Way campaign um, probably for 30 years um, I've had the absolute honor of chairing our local community allocation committee chairing Ohio County Health Care's um, employee drive for many years and recently sitting on their regional board. So that's been such a great experience for me to not only see what's happening in Ohio County and the funds we raise here and how it's spent locally, but then to see how has that broader regional impact also. So with that, I'm gonna bring up Ms. Savannah. And what we'd like to do today is for those who are here, we'd like to have you all join us in recognizing um, the people who raised money in their own employee campaigns and um, give you a chance to ask any questions you might have about United Way. Oh, that's loud. We are loud. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to start off by thanking all the companies um, within Ohio County who ran United Way campaigns in 2022. Um, those are Ohio County Board of Education, Ohio County Healthcare. You turned me down. <laughs> well, I think when you just you step away. Um, yeah, Purdue Farms, um, Rogers Motors, First United Bank and Trust, Walmart, and Ritatsu Manufacturing. United Way really appreciates all of you for your support in your community and working to ensure the people of your community are able to receive the help they need. Today we would like to recognize some specific people and companies that went above and beyond this year to ensure your community is being served to the best capacity through United Way. So the first award we're going to reward this year is the Campaign Spirit Award and the President's Award. The Campaign Spirit Award is given to the company who has the highest percentage of their employees participate in their 2022 to 2023 campaign. And the President's Award is given to the organization that attained the highest average gift per employee in their campaign. The organization receiving these two awards this year is First United Bank and Trust. Um, the second award we'll be rewarding this year is the Campaign Chairman's Award. This award is given to the organization that demonstrates the greatest overall achievement and impact toward the campaign. This award will be given to Purdue Farms, and I don't think anybody is here from this. So today. Aaron Groves has represented and spearheaded that camp employee campaign um, for many years. She sits on our community investment um, board, and um, they do a terrific job. As always, Purdue makes sure they put they pour themselves back into the community. 
Um, so I would also like to recognize our community champions, or previously known as employee campaign managers. These people do the hard work and organization of their campaigns, come up with creative ideas to engage their coworkers, and drive the United Way mission within their organization. So I have a list, but I don't think everybody's here, so I'll just call your name and you can come up if you are. Um, we know Aaron Groves is not here from Purdue. I'm accepted for Jared. Okay, Jared Davis. Brand new. To healthcare. Brand new, took this over for us this year. Um, Kara Bullock. Kara Bullock with the Hawkins School System. Um, I have Shannon Coots. You have to come up here twice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Chelsea Cooper. I don't think she said she was going to be here. Okay, so now I'd like to bring up Vicki Embry, our Community Investment and Impact Director. Um, she's going to say a few words, too. Hey, everybody. So I want to just talk a little bit about the agencies that we serve in this camp that are serving citizens in your county and that United Way is helping to support on some level. Um, a lot of people say, well, I kind of know what United Way does, but I don't know for sure. So we'll just talk a little bit briefly about that. But the agencies are the Bulware Mission, Building Stronger Families, Hospice of Ohio County, New Beginning Sexual Assault Services, and Carla's here, I saw Carla, Oasis, Ohio County 4-H Scholarship Program, Ohio County 4-H Leadership Program, Ohio County Food Pantry, the Backpack Program, Ohio County Senior Services, Meals on Wheels, and St. Benedict's Shelter for Men. So, and we also have, Audubon Area has applied for funding this year too, and we are right now starting that allocation process for this county, and they've applied for the Foster Grandparent Senior Companion Program, Retired Senior Volunteer Program, because they serve uh, individuals in your county. So what community investment does, and that's what makes United Way so unique from other funders, is that we, the dollars that are invested in United Way from community donors, we also have volunteers who invest in United Way by saying where they feel like those dollars should go. So United Way staff does not make that decision. It is people just like you in this room that do that. So they are community investment volunteers. So they were in the, it takes some time, and like she said, she has chaired a committee here for us for a while. But they review the applications. Um, in some counties, they do site visits. They go out and see these agencies and learn more about what they do and interview people there. We have financial reviewers, accountants that will look over the financials and make sure everything's in line. So there's somewhat of a vetting process. And then they just help determine what kind of impact they feel like that program's making in the community where they've applied for funding. And then that's how they decide what allocation amounts go. So by um, July, the end of July, that process will be done for this county and we will be sending out award letters to the ones who have applied of how much funding they will receive. So I do want to tell you, so that's the good news. There's a little bit that we can work on and obviously United Way takes primary responsibility for that. But also I like to let communities know where we're at financially as far as the campaigns in your county. So last year we allocated $34,567 um, is what we allocated. The request we have this year has went up $13,433. So now the request for funding is $48,000. Um, we have uh, $6,551 that is designation. So that's when a company does an employee campaign drive. We, they can, an employee can check off where I want my money to go and not go in the general pot for United Way. So that, in that general pot is where the allocation money comes from. But if an employee says, you know, I want my money to go to Building Stronger Families, they can check that off. So those designations were $6,551. The amount we have to meet this $48,000 request is $27,439. So it's went down somewhat, and that could be because the employee campaigns went down. Uh, it could be a corporation, their money's going to the corporate level, county where the corporate office is at versus the county. There's lots of different reasons why that money can go down. Um, so 
just to let you know, if you if you are an employer, you've thought about doing a campaign, now is the time to really think about it. And Savannah's here, you could talk to her or ask for her email because those dollars that you raise go back into your county. They do not go in Davis County, they stay right here in your county. And you have great organizations here that are serving the citizens in your county and, and the need is great as well. So. Um, we are looking at more ways to raise money and we will continue to do that, but we also uh, need companies' helps or individuals. So anything you can do will be great for your county. And I have just a couple people to recognize as well, and these are our Community Investment Volunteer Awards. And just as I explained earlier, they are the ones that look over the applications and help decide where those allocations go. So the first one's right here with me, Cece Robinson. Thank you for all your support to United Way. CC's amazing. Y'all don't need me to tell you that, but we really appreciate for everything you do at United Way. Bernie Hayes, I just got to meet him today. He's over here. Thank you. Bernie, how long have you been doing it? Uh, I've been on the committee probably 12 years. Yeah, I was Something thinking like it was a years. long time. Bernie really um, does the work of the committee. Well, yeah. I tell you what, the work is getting harder. It's us. getting harder and harder as the dollars go down. It's it's tougher and tougher to make the decisions mm -hmm. of where to allocate these funds to. Right. So uh, please, if anything that you can do to to get the drive to come up a little bit, it'd be a great thing. We oh, really appreciate you. it. Thank you, Bernie. Bernie thank worked you. at a um, big river for many, many yeah, years. I worked at big river for 36 years, and I had all that I could take. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a chance to get out, and I did. Thank you. And I told him, happy retirement, but we're so glad he's spending time with United Way and still giving back to his community. Um, the next award is Shannon Coots, so you get to come up again. It's like the Oscars, Shannon. You just get to keep coming up. I didn't prepare a speech. But <laughs> you, you're more than welcome to talk if you want to. Uh, thank you. I will say, First United and Shannon um, Coots um, have, since I've been on the United Way board, they, along with Bernie and several others, are just leading the charge. So they're they're dedicated to the cause. And the last one, I'm not sure if he's here. I haven't met him yet. Jason Bullock? No. No? Okay. Well, I will keep this and we will get this to him. That'll be an excuse for me to get to meet him in person. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. So if you're thinking about running an employee campaign, reach out. I can give you great guidance. Reach out to myself, to Shannon, to Jason, any of us here. Um, we'd love to have more dollars to serve the people of Ohio County. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn the next portion of our program over to um, Beaver, Down Tour Beaver Down, pardon me, Tourism. Um, I'm not sure if Shelby or Paul is going to speak for us today. Or maybe both. We might get a duo. I tried. Oh, you tried. <laughs> so we're fortunate to have Mayor Sanifer who's going to represent Beaver Down Tourism. Thank you, sir. I would like to introduce Shelby Wiley. Shelby is our new tourism director for the City of Beaver and Tourism Commission. Uh, she started in May, so I'm kind of giving her a pass yet still. Um, and she started in May and she's due in July 10th. So, you know, you do what you have to do. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say. We just want to talk a little bit about what's going on in Beaver Dam and, and tourism as a whole in our community. Uh, I ran some numbers over the last few days the amphitheater, and I'm gonna pull it out because it's, we do a lot of events in Beaverdam. We have our Strawberry Festival, our Christmas Festival, our Oktoberfest, and all of our Friday night music. But the amphitheater is what we're obviously known for. I hear it every time I travel anywhere. But in 2022, the revenues directly to the amphitheater was just over $1.3 million. And that doesn't count any restaurant tax. That's strictly the revenue from ticket sales, merchandise sales, and concession sales. And they always say, and Jody, correct me if I'm wrong, money turns over seven times in a community. Yes. So that's yes. just it's shy, six, so. just shy $10 million from that alone. So the numbers, I don't know if Jody has any countywide numbers, yeah, but the board, so. well, they're skewed though, because I don't think they're getting everything. Because I see these numbers and I'm like, I know there's more than that going on here. Uh, I can even back it up a little bit. We started our, our restaurant tax in 2013. And since that time, the revenue and restaurants, and just in the corporate limits of Beaverdam alone, has raised about 22%. Our population hasn't gone up, so that, and, and the number of new restaurants has gone up as well, so that tells you there's a lot of people from out of town spending money here. Uh, the restaurant tax brings in around $700,000 a year, 
we can calculate that about 40% of that comes from people who do not even live in Ohio County. And that's, to me, that's a big plus. Uh, for the citizens of Beaverdam, of that other 60%, we figure about 35% of it comes from people who do not live within the city limits. So uh, we're trying to maximize our <coughs> programs with uh, minimal expense, but that's been a very good thing for the city and the county. We like to believe that it's been a big part of the county and have done our part. And it's not all about amphitheater. Like I said, we've got the different events we do with our Strawberry Festival and our festivals. Baseball tournaments have got to be a big one. We had a big tournament here this past weekend. And on July 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, we're hosting one of the Cal Ripken State Tournament the tournaments here. There'll be 20, I think 24 teams coming in for those four days. And that's, that's huge for the whole community. Uh, with that being said, we are working very hard to uh, secure a new hotel here in the community. Uh, Jody and I talk about that on a regular basis. Uh, we've been working with a consultant who's been working with the city on retail as well as hotel. And uh, I feel like we're getting closer. Uh, we kind of got kicked with COVID. We had two different hotel chains coming in, one in September, uh, February and one in March of 2020. The one came in in February, but the March one didn't with COVID. And of course the hotel industry took a terrible hit with COVID. And obviously we're still kind of back at the square one, but we feel good about it that we'll get there. Uh, I do appreciate our bed and breakfast here and the Airbnbs that are working here. They've been very helpful to get people in here and, and try to keep people and money in our community. Just a few events we have going on. We have our Sparks in the Park coming up July, uh, January, July, sorry, July 1st. We always do it the first Saturday in July. That will be at the amphitheater. July 15th, we're doing some kind of unique part of our sesquicentennial celebration. We're doing a Balloon and brews. Am I saying that right? Saying balloon and balloons and balloons and brews. We're doing a brew fest that afternoon of micro breweries and having a hot air balloon festival that evening. They're doing tethered balloon rides. We had one balloon came in sold out in less than an hour. Second balloon came in and sold out the next day. And I think they've got a third one coming in to do the tethered balloon rides. But then they're doing a glow. It's got ten hot air balloons coming in and in the dust they're going to light them up and just kind of hover over the back parking lot there to park live music, food trucks, the whole work. So we're excited about that. Uh, July 29th is our Aggies Rocks the Dam concert. August, we've done something we've never done before and we're probably pretty crazy. It just shows how ignorant we are. On August the 10th, no, 11th, we're doing Chris Young. The next night, we're doing the Beach Boys. <laughs> so two shows back to back on a Friday, Saturday. Is going to be something a little unique for us, but I will say the Beach Boys I find interesting. They're going to be backed up by the Owensboro Symphony Orchestra, and I think that's really cool to have that music section backing them up. Then later that month we have Queens Wright. We've got uh, Jim Blossoms coming up Labor Day weekend, and then we have uh, Hairball, which has been a popular one for a lot of people. If you haven't been to a Hairball show, I recommend going. It's an inexpensive ticket, but they put on a phenomenal show. I mean, they'll come out and do KISS and KISS Regalia. They'll do ACDC, and they look like and sound like ACDC. ACDC. So it's, it's a really a fun show, and I recommend everybody come out for that if you can. Uh, we are. Shelby, what's the date of the Oktoberfest? 6th and 7th of October, and then our Christmas festival will be the first weekend in December. So, And we're still planning some other sesquicentennial events as well. But uh, just happy to be able to be a part, our community be a part in helping Ohio County with the tourism. And uh, I say this all the time, I hear people talk about, and I, we hear it all the time, you know, it's not a big deal. I said, well, I think, what was it, Jody, $22 million in 2021? Yeah. It was brought, spent in tourism dollars in Ohio County, and I asked somebody, I said, okay, so if someone was coming in to uh, build a plant that's going to spend $22 million a year, would you be okay with it? We'd do anything we can to get them. <laughs> Here it is, support it. So I ask everybody to support their own community, though, and, and let's support Ohio County tourism. But thank you all. Thank you, Paul, for that. And I'm going to say, um, I, I do believe in that value of ecotourism dollars and it, in that ripple effect. It's not just in the money spent. I know for myself in healthcare recruitment that it makes a huge impact when we're bringing candidates in our community and we have these awesome places to show. I, I firmly believe Dr. Angel O'Quinn, who y'all met a few months ago, would not have signed if she hadn't had a personal tour of the Bill Monroe home place because she loved it. She's a huge Bill Monroe fan. and. I think that sealed the deal for her. So 
both of these organizations work so hard for our community. So with that, I'm gonna bring okay. Ms. Jody Fleener up here and right. uh, Melissa, and they are going to tell you all about Ohio County tourism as a whole. Um, thank you. I'm Jody Fleener. I do your county tourism. So, and I am so thankful that Paul's in Beaverdam because Beaverdam Tourism takes care of Beaverdam and they do a fantastic job. Welcome, Shelby. Anxious to start working with you. And I'd like to introduce one of my board members, Melissa Palomino. You may see her on the radio with Jerry. She is uh, also Vanna today. Oh. So. <laughs> And the reason you have this little home place magnet to take home with you is because where Beaver Dam, you hear it all over, the amphitheater, the amphitheater. When you hear Ohio County, they say Bill Monroe, Bill Monroe, the big brown signs on the road. So um, you all have this little magnet to take home. And the light in the window is because Bill wrote a song called On My Way Back to the Home Place. And there's no light in the window that burned so long ago. Because he came back to visit after everyone had moved out and he was very sad because everyone was gone, his mom and father had passed away, no one was living in the house, and the light wasn't burning. So we will always keep that light burning for Bill and all of our guests. Click, Vanna. <laughs> So I'm doing kind of the boring stuff. Um, we are going to look at some data, but it should be good news because tourism is good news. A tourist is considered anyone 50 miles away to be coming into your community. So that's good news. It means we're not spending all this money that they are. But when you go someplace, you're their tourism. So first of all, how many have seen the billboards out on uh, I-65? Yay. We have the, the one catching them after they're coming from the capital of, Bill Gra of Bluegrass, coming into the home of Bluegrass, getting them into Rosine. And then now when you're going in, everyone's coming this week for romp. So they're coming to Owensboro. They're seeing our festival sign. So they're going to come back here in September. So I love those signs out there. So in 2019, we also did this talk. And at that time, I was able to hang you. That little hangman's up there because the Lane Report had reported that tourism was number two for uh, impact and economic, uh, and economic impact. I, the numbers for 2022 show that tourism has fallen to fourth. Why? Let's not forget COVID. COVID did a number on tourism. We got to use it for an excuse, obviously, in 20. Hardly anything was open. 21, people were still a little bit afraid to get out and about. But 22, they started coming back. But they're not back all the way. But as I meet with other tourism directors and with state people, they go, no more excuses. COVID's over. Let's start doing it. Let's get back to what now is our normal. And people are moving. So that that's there. So next slide. So why and how is tourism? And this happens to be the worst slide you can ever do in a presentation because it's all reading. So I'll just whip through it and you guys will read it along, but that is a definite no-no when you're doing a PowerPoint. Did you know that tourism is actually set up by KRS statues? People think that Paul and I just said, oh, we're going to get together with these people and start advertising stuff. Did you know that the Board of Directors actually has to be designated people set up by KRS statue? Did you know that we're part of the Department of Local Government? Did you know that we have to report quarterly and annually? Did you know that we have to follow county, city, regional rules and guidelines? Did you know that tourism is a business? It does, it does pay. It does bring in money. Did you know that Florida has no state tax? And why? Tourism. Disneyland. If we could do something so huge that uh, we had a Disneyland and we're working on it, Paul, <laughs> so there's no state tax because we all go down and spend, their, spend our money for them. Okay. So let's talk about Ohio County. The 2022 data is not all out yet. And the reason is the good news. The good news is the data is so good for Kentucky in 2022 that Governor Bashir wants to release it himself. So the numbers are there. I was at a meeting a couple weeks ago. The numbers are out, the county numbers are out, but they're trying to do the press release with the governor and getting that timing going because he said, I want to be part of this. I want people to know what Kentucky has done for 2022. 
So um, this little slide is just going to show you that last time I did this comparison was in 2017. So the data I'm sharing with you now is 2021. 2017 tourism spending was at 14 million. Now it's at 23.68 million. And that's Ohio County. That's for, within your county. It produced worker income of 3.7. It created local tax revenue back then at um, 198,000, 1 1.6 million for local tax revenue. And it created the state tax revenue at 807.9 million. So now the job support, I almost debated having to show you that, but again, we have to remember COVID. We lost some businesses. We lost things that actually brought in tourism. And as Paul said, we're getting new ones and they're coming back. But the data for 21 did show that the, the job rate was down. So another thing that is really exciting is when we go places, um, it, there was a national survey and it says that Kentucky is the number uh, four friendliest state. 87% of people nationally interviewed and took the survey said, we like Kentucky as the friendly state. And I hear that all the time out at the museum. People say, we love coming here. And, and they come back because we're all friendly folks. And it's your businesses. And it's your people that are out there that are greeting these people, making us known. So um, click. So this was just a comparison for local state taxes. And the commissioner said, I really, really want to release the numbers because they are so good. And he just kept smiling and kept holding himself back in because at that meeting he couldn't give those numbers. But I'm anxious to see them because he was so excited about the, what they were going to be. Click. <laughs> These are the things that bring them in. We do have our heritage. Don't ever, ever think that that's not important. Sometimes people say, oh, what would Bill ever do? He was born here, and he got famous, and he came back here to be buried. Bluegrass is still our number one attraction, bluegrass music. And then the events, festivals, and I included shopping. Um, when I talk to our merchants, I know, like, um, oh, I can't think of the name, the new baby thing. Magnolia, yeah. She said she does a ton of out-of-state, out-of-town business, even out-of-state and a ton of online. So we're getting knowing for our shopping. It's yes, shop local, shop local, because other people are shopping us too. I like saying that. <laughs> then I'll click, please. <laughs> So when I was back here in 2018 giving this report, I was saying that we were striving to be, uh, instead of a one-day trip, to be a weekend destination. It's happening. As Paul stated, stated we've got a lot of new uh, Airbnbs opening up. we got bed and breakfasts opening up, and our hotel room data actually is going up. We do need that other hotel so, so bad. Um, I keep saying, build it, and they will come. They will come. So um, it is working. Those things that are going on are the, the scenes and sounds from Rosine. And I will assure you that Owensboro does work with us. They do share information with us. We go back and forth with things. When they do a big event, they're letting me set up free this weekend for Romp to advertise where Bill is from. The Cowboy Fast Draw, the Rosine Barn, Beagle Runs, the Ohio County Park activities. They're doing so many activities that are bringing people in from other areas. The Jerusalem Ridge celebration, Sounds on 2nd, the Chapman, Roy Chapman Baseball Complex, Picking on the Porch is the second Saturday up at the uh, home place. If you've never been, it's just a completely relaxed day. There's a band there, and we're starting to see people from out of state coming to that Saturday. And I put shopping down, keep shopping, and, go, and uh, people are coming in. Click. <laughs> 2018 versus 2022. The, the number on the right are your numbers for the things that have happened. The home place, those visits didn't actually increase that much. Again, uh, people were afraid of that. The museum did increase. We went from 600 to 900. Um, the Jerusalem Ridge Festival increased. So things are, things are happening. 
Sparks in the Parks is there with big fireworks. Uh, people come in for that. They come in for our fishing. They come in for our hunting. They come into the library for the genealogy. We get people all over. And so it's like, oh, they're just coming in to look at books. They're probably going to eat out. They may take some break and go shopping. And maybe they need gas before they go back. That's funny, folks. That's why, that's why we can get work towards no state tax. But all these things are helping bring in money. The golf course, the uh, museum, even in Hartford, they have people call and want to see that museum. Okay. So what's all going on? We have the park activities, the museums, the home place, the barn, Sounds on Second, the amphitheaters kicked off their sessions, the community festivals are beginning, Dundee had their days, um, and Dundee has also started a bluegrass section. They do every second Saturday, they're hosting a bluegrass in the um, old bank that was up there. And uh, Tamara, should you tell me that you're getting people from other counties that are coming in to, to participate in there. The fishing, the hunting, the parks in our community, don't undersell our parks. If you have company coming in with little people, take them to some the park in your community. They are they are they have great um, playground equipment and things. And uh, I live in Horse Branch, and I take my grandkids over to the Rosine one all the time. They have a ball, and uh, that's easy entertainment. Not spending any money for tourism, <laughs> but it's a good thing to do. So last one, and I'm just going to say that. If you haven't listened to bluegrass music at least once, it's hard to call yourself an Ohio Countyan. So, on your table, you have two little commercials. The uh, Jerusalem Ridge Festival, and uh, I did put down a sponsorship there. Please contact us if you would like to sponsorship for that. And this is a new event. This will be our third year. It's a run on Jerusalem Ridge. And it has brought in five different states are coming to this. So it, it's a good one. We stick uh, bluegrass musicians out in the woods. They hear the music and they see animals while they're running. So if you're a runner, come run the ridge. I thank you very much. And I'm always, my office is always open if you have questions or would like to know more about Ohio County. Thank you. So many exciting things. I'm going to tell you what, you'd be hard-pressed any weekend in Ohio County not to find something to do. Um, with that, um, I need a volunteer at Ms. Karis Price. You look like you're the volunteer. And I want you to know I spent my time waiting for um, listening to our presentations, um, shuffling these tickets. So it wasn't just, we didn't draw just the first, last one in. So I have just like a deck of cards shuffled these very well. So you're saying I don't have a shot? Yeah, I don't know. If you usually put yours in on the very last. Uh oh. Read off that number. Six eight eight. Six eight eight. The last three numbers. Who's got six eight eight? Oh, come on up here. So we've had two kind donations today. Um, one from our Beaver Dam Tourism and one from the Ohio County Tourism. And I will just you can just pick whichever one you want. Da, 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 Thank you, Karis. Karis is visiting his home this summer from her, her college um, and remind me, Ole Miss, Ole Miss. So we always want to encourage our all of our youth to come back home. And we know that when she finishes up college, we'll see her a lot more. So nice to see you. See you. Okay, I turn that back over to Mr. Josh Coppage as our president. So. Um, I know there's some new members or members that are, this is our, either the first or second time coming to our membership membership meeting, so I want to introduce those. I know we have some representatives from the Huddle House and um, Next Generation Pest, um, pest Control. Uh, anyone else that I may have overlooked that this is their first time? Go ahead. 
Illuminator Behavioral Health. Oh yeah, Illuminator Behavioral Health. So yes, awesome. So glad to have you all here. We've had a little bit of push in the past couple of months for um, our new members and we had some new um, new businesses coming in so it's always great to see our membership grow and if there's anything that we can do for you all please let us know and we'll be more than happy to help you. Um, I am, this is my last um, meeting as president so a sigh of relief for all of you all to not have to listen to me anymore, but yeah. Josh has done a great job. Well, <clears throat> I, wanted to, I wanted to let you all know um, this is sort of our bounce back from COVID. Everyone's talked about that. So we we're super excited about having membership meetings back again because we, we, we didn't have those for so many, for two years at least. And then uh, our growth as far as the chamber has moved forward and we're carrying on some traditions that we've had for so many years that we're happy to have. And we couldn't have done it with, without, obviously, Judy. Um, Judy Law is our executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, and she does so much for us. So we're so happy that she is um, is with us all the time. So um, I don't think I have anything else um, to say, but I do want to recognize some outgoing board members. And then I want to hand the gavel over to Cece, so and then she can start from there. So, uh, recognize one of our outgoing members, um, our board board member who's leaving us, is and we don't want her to leave, but she is leaving us. Aww. Kathy Law is. Um, we want to recognize Kathy and her. Can you come up here? I know she doesn't want to. <laughs> Next, the gavel for CC. <laughs> if you all don't know, this is my second time being president of the Chamber of Commerce. I think this is your second time being president. I think it may be my third. Maybe third. I don't know. It's been a long time. So um, I love it though. Recycling. I love it. Love it. So are we recycling? Oh, I yeah. love it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. I've loved serving with Josh over the years. And I know we'll continue to serve together. So with that, I just want to let everybody know y'all can still call me Cece. You don't have to call me Madam President. It's, don't, don't feel compelled. Um, so with that, Josh, we're going to um, take the moment to um, go ahead and swear in our new slate of board of directors. And I do want to remind everybody, these people who are standing up here are going to take this oath they're, it's a working board. They're all volunteers, they all have full-time jobs, and they take that time out each month to meet as a, a leadership team and then also to come here and have the meeting to help make sure that we can um, push progress forward for Ohio County and be part of that, because we're very proud of our community. So with that, Mayor Sanifer, I need your official duties to do the oath of office, and sir. And our board members. And I need all of our current board members to please come forward. <laughs> that was official. That means we've got enough here. You should never have given me a gamble. All of our old. solemnly swear or affirm that I will seriously execute the office to which I have been elected. 
So with that, we won't see each other till September back in this room for our official meeting. But I'm going to urge everybody in this room to keep watching the Hockney Chamber um, Facebook page. Follow along in the newsletter and your, and your emails. We know there's going to be lots of stuff happening between now and September. Fingers crossed we're going to be opening, uh, having a ribbon cutting and a new surgical wing. And I hope to see each of you all there. So kind of tentatively save that date for the 1st of August. Um, with that, thank you to my uh, fellow board members for serving. Thank you guys for coming today. Go out, enjoy your summer, and to go do good things. And we're done. Thank you. Peace out.